The hits keep coming. Luke Fickle got himself another one, and this one is a big-time addition from the transfer portal. We're going to talk about the newest Wisconsin Badger, what it means for the team, and why it was such a good get for Luke Fickle and this program in 2023. We're going to talk about that and way more in today's Locked On Badgers. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, my friends? Welcome to Locked On Badgers. I'm your host, Ryan Herring. As always, really, really do appreciate everybody tuning in, making this one of your first listens. We talk about the Badgers every single day, sometimes more than every single day, it feels like. But we're here for you when the news pops, and this was a big one. But first, today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown college that's linkedin.com slash lockdown college post your job for free terms and conditions do apply all right let's get into this one because this is a big one um the the transfer portal continues to bear heavy fruit for luke fickle and the wisconsin badgers football team jake renfro coming in he is uh he was a cincinnati player so he's one of a couple different players following luke fickle and the staff over from cincinnati um this is a big one he's a center and in, in, he missed all of last year. He missed all of 2022 with an injury. In 2021, he was an all AAC performer. Um, his three years of eligibility left. In 2020, he immediately made an impact as a freshman. This is a big time get, an all conference type player in his conference, and somebody that is back from his injury. He's reportedly healthy, and this fits a big need. What did we see Wisconsin lose in the draft, right? We saw front seven defenders, and we saw Joe Tittman. Tittman's going to be drafted. That was your center this year. And going forward next year, that was going to be a question mark. Are you going to put Tanner Bordellini there? You don't have to anymore because I think Bordellini is probably better as a guard. Um, so now you're bringing in a guy who is a straight-up center. He's a good run blocker, good pass blocker. Um, again, a type of a player that came in right away uh, and is a freshman and made his mark. And then the, his next year starting as a sophomore was an all-conference type performer. And the center spot at Wisconsin in, in any offensive line is pivotal. And now you're replacing um, a really good center in Joe Tittman with another really good center. It's going to be plug and play. If you're talking impacts in 2023, look at all the transfers Wisconsin's brought in, all the transfers Luke Fickle has brought in. This is one of those that's going to, other than Tanner Mordecai, obviously, this is probably the most impactful transfer for 2023 that Wisconsin has brought in so far. And there's been some nice pieces. I mean, you know, obviously uh, Darian at the defensive end spot is a big deal. Uh, my trade is going to be kind of a slot corner that matters, but this is a plug and play starter at center, a pivotal spot in this offensive line. And then you look at what it does for the rest of the players on Wisconsin's offensive line. Now Tanner Bordellini can slide over. There's one of your starting guards, right? It, it creates this ripple effect across everything else that I think moves Bordellini into what is going to be his best spot. And then it creates a fierce competition at the other spot, which is phenomenal, right? That's what you want. More competition, uh, you know, Rajiv on last show talked about this. Competition breeds success. And bringing in two offense linemen, Huber is the other one they brought in that can play tackle or guard, can play on either side. Now you have two guys coming in, um, increased competition everywhere. It's phenomenal. Now, I want to talk about, I probably won't talk about it a lot this show. Spring ball's coming up. So some of this competition may may force some people into the portal, may um, some players may make tough business decisions um, after spring ball, after they see where they shake out. But that's good. That's natural. That's normal. Competition, you know, it's not everybody's going to play. And you're bringing these players in. Again, Bordellini's probably going to be a guard. You have your two tackles, which I think will probably be Malman and Nelson. But who knows? Like, it's a new offensive line coach, a new system, a new coaching staff, right? Everybody, when you have a new coaching staff comes in, gets a, a fresh lease of life, right? Everybody gets a fresh set of eyes put on them. So there's going to be surprises. I don't know where those surprises are going to be, but there's definitely going to be surprises. So now you have Renfro again, probably going to be your starting center. You have Bordellini, I think is going to be a guard. And then that other guard competition, you're looking at Joe Brunner. You're looking at uh, Dylan Barrett, Trey Weddy, Michael Fertney. Remember, Fertney came back too, right? Fertney was going to leave. He went to the portal. He came back. So you have a crazy veteran um, competition there because what – Trey Wedding played guard last year. Joe Bronner got in there. Now he's pretty young, but Dylan Barrett is going to be going into, I think, his senior year now. And then you have Joe Huber coming in from Cincinnati as well. And that guy graded out incredibly well last season as both a pass protector and a run blocker. He could play guard. So there's going to be four or five people 
fighting for, I think, that one guard spot. Because I really think Bordellini is going to be the other one. You're going to have Renfro in the middle. And then those tackle spots. Think about the competition there, right? I think Nelson's going to lock down at left tackle. He's been there for two years, right? But maybe on that other side, now you have Trey Wedding, who I think is a better tackle than a guard anyway. He's going to be battling with Mallman. You still have Rucci there. I mean, it is going to be a huge battle, right? And that's good. There's going to be a two deep across the entire offensive line. And the other thing this does, Renfro coming in, right? It's not just that he's probably going to be the starter. It's not just that he's probably going to be a good starter at a pivotal spot on the offensive line. It's that he also gives you that depth that allows those other pieces to move around. So big time get. I saw Wisconsin fans. Listen, everybody's waiting on CJ Williams, right? The four, four or five star receiver, depending on where you look from last year's class that has been linked to Wisconsin. It's like on the precipice. I feel like you're at a restaurant right now waiting for your, your appetizer to come out and you're just you can't wait for it to get here. That's CJ Williams. So everyone, when they, some people, when they heard that this was the news were kind of, it was met with maybe a little bit of a lackluster enthusiasm because you wanted CJ Williams. I'm telling you, this is a huge get. If you can get a, an all conference type performer with three years of eligibility left, by the way, Renfro has got three years left. If he wants to use them, we'll see. You never know with, with today's era of college football, but he's got three years of eligibility left. He's a proven performer. Um, he's got experience and he's sliding into a spot that's been vacated by somebody who's going to get drafted. It, it checks every box. This is a huge gift for Wisconsin, a huge gift for Luke Fickle. And this was a player where right, you're talking about competition for a guy. This is a guy LSU wanted LSU desperately wanted Renfro went after him, recruited him. He visited there. That's the level of talent that this is that you're fending off one of the really blue bloods of the SEC to land Renfro. And it probably doesn't happen without the connection, right? This is a Cincinnati guy. It's Fickle's guy. It probably doesn't happen without that connection. So it's a huge get to, to be able to fend off LSU, to be able to find a starter at a spot that needs a new body next year, and to be able to provide that, that domino effect of increased depth across the line. Because now Bordellini doesn't have to be the center. Now he can be a guard. That And then by Bordellini moving to guard, you move another body to the other competition at guard right you you increase it just the competition everywhere it's going to make the offensive line better deeper nastier i love this move it's a big time get for wisconsin it's a big time get for next year right a lot of recruiting is about two or three years down the road even some of the transfer portal stuff a guy like nick evers isn't for this year but renfro's a guy for 23 and beyond he's going to help us next year opening day he's going to be there in the trenches helping this phil longo offense get going be excited for this one badger fans this is a big one all right coming up we're going to talk about who else is out there. We've mentioned CJ Williams. Um, there's a couple other players I find really interesting that Wisconsin's been linked to. We're going to talk about four or five players that Wisconsin has had on in visits. They've, they've been linked to. We're going to talk about those players next on Lockdown Badgers. But first, today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn remains um, just the number one source for small businesses trying to navigate making hires, making the right hires. And it's, it's difficult as a small business manager, a hiring manager, you know that success in 23 depends on the team members you surround yourself with. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have skills, values, and experience to help you achieve those roles. It's something I've used in my, my IT career. It's something my company uses. I use it to expand my professional network. I know Luke Fickle's diving into LinkedIn, finding that running backs coach. They have screening tools to keep the people that have no business applying for your job out of your way so nobody's wasting time they go beyond the resume data by really diving into what's important they identify the most qualified candidates and they make it easy to screen and rate applicants based on your job qualifications and, you know so again it's why small businesses continue to rate linkedin jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors linkedin jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown college that's linkedin.com slash lockdown college post your job for free terms and conditions do apply when you're done here go check out uh locked on college basketball everything you need to know about the college basketball season in one place plus hear from big name experts insiders coaches and players locked on college basketball available on youtube or wherever you get your podcast all right let's keep this going um a bunch more players that wisconsin's in on they've been cycling through madison there's been visits let's start with the obvious one the whale that everybody's waiting on that cj williams the former usc receiver one of the elite prospects in the 21 class um, didn't do a, our 22 class. Sorry. Didn't really do a lot at USC last year, um, but that is a loaded USC receiving group. He had a nagging injury, but he is a legitimate man amongst boys type of receiver. You know, if he comes to Madison, 
he's probably the best receiver on the roster, probably when he steps on steps foot on campus. So you get that Phil Longo offense coming in. You're going to have more multiple receiver sets. This is that alpha male, uh, that number one kind of top of the food chain receiver that Phil Longo's offense had at Ole Miss with DK Metcalf, that type of player, right? Now is it going to be that? No, because there's no other DK Metcalf, Metcalfs in the world, right? But he gives you that number one receiver ability, and apparently he's we he has linked with West Virginia. He's been to Madison, um, and that's kind of where we're at. We don't know for sure, but the smoke is there, and I think the odds on favorite right now, unless somebody steps in, we heard rumblings of Georgia kind of uh, making a call. But unless somebody steps in, it looks like uh, Wisconsin could very well end up the winner here, and that would be obviously an enormous addition. But let's keep going because he's not the only one. Bryson Green. Bryson Green's an interesting player. A lot of receivers, a lot of weapons in this transfer list, which makes sense, right? Because Phil Longo's coming in. Phil Longo has talked about in his press conference the number of receivers he wants on a roster, and Wisconsin's not there. Wisconsin's about three receivers short of what Phil Longo wants in a receiving room numbers-wise, right? Again, remember, Phil Longo wants a lot of three, four receiver sets. They're going to run a lot. He wants to cycle people out, so he wants more depth there. So it makes sense that a lot of receivers are coming through Madison. A lot of receivers in the transfer portal have gravitated towards this offense that Phil Longo is putting in, especially when they see Tanner Mordecai, right? Now you have this quarterback coming in, Phil Longo plus the quarterback. Yeah, no doubt receivers are interested. I mean, it, I, who wouldn't be? If you're if you're a pass catcher, you, you better get your butt to Madison while you can. So Bryson Green's an interesting one, Oklahoma State transfer. Um, this is a very productive receiver coming in, and this one this one's a battle. Bryson Green, 36 catches last year, 580 yards. He led the Cowboys in touchdowns at five receiving touchdowns. Um, Old Miss has interest. Auburn has interest. I think he's visiting Auburn. He's been to Wisconsin. This is um, a thick-built receiver. Not a burner burner, but really productive, well-built. So, you know, Bryson Green is out there. He's another receiver. You have two more receivers here. You have Will Pauling, both Cincinnati, former Cincinnati um, players, both entered the portal after Luke Fickle left. Will Pauling was a class of 21 kid, uh, former Cincy commit, 5'10", 165, so smaller. But he's got legit 4'4", 4'4", speed. So Will Pauling is a burner. He's probably that more of that Dean Ingram build, um, a slot guy, not real big, but fast, right? Someone that you can use to get open, choice routes, third and five. You know, you can run the choice route, break it off either way, get six, seven yards, and then get yards in space, right? What did Phil Longo talk about? Phil Longo talked about get athletes and then put them in space and stay out of their way. Pauling's an athlete. He is a legitimately fast receiver, undersized, but those type of players can thrive in space. So Pauling is another kid that Wisconsin has had on campus interested in. Uh, Quincy Burroughs, another receiver, right? That's the fourth receiver we've talked about here with C.J. Williams, Bryson Green, Will Pauling, and Quincy Burroughs. Burroughs is another Cincinnati transfer. He was a 22 kid out of Jacksonville, Florida, um, different than Pauling. So Pauling, again, is the smaller one. Burroughs is 6'2", uh, about 180, 190 pounds. Didn't play last year, so uh, has his red shirt. A lot of eligibility left. A bigger framed receiver. Um, an interesting player as well. Uh, and then let's get into the tight end. Wisconsin offered uh, Notre Dame transfer K, uh, Kane Barong. Uh, he was a four-star prospect in the class of 21. This was a kid that Wisconsin had some interest in when he was a high school recruit as well. And tight end is a spot that's interesting to me, right? We're seeing a lot of receivers cycle through. But you look at that tight end room. Who are you confident in is going to make it through a year, right? Like, think about it. There's a heavy pause there, right? Um, there's there's bodies in that room that I think are interesting. There were some really nice recruiting wins in that room. But nobody's really been able to emerge and stay healthy. And some of that's bad luck. Like, I'm not a big proponent of um, that guy's an injury risk when it's been fluke injuries. Like, Cl Condiff has had fluke injuries, right? I don't, I don't think those are, are necessarily really re reoccurring risks. You know, it's when you start dealing with ankles, hamstrings, um, those type of things feel like reoccurring stuff. But the, the fact remains, Cundiff hasn't been able to make it through a season, right? And a lot of other players in that roster, in that room, have had injury concerns. So I think tight end is, is a need. I think they would love to get in their body here, and that makes sense that it, you, we've seen them offer a guy. We've seen them offer Cade Barong. I don't know if it's going to happen, but that's a nice target to, to go after. A big size guy, went to Notre Dame, um, really good recruiting pedigree. And then the, the interesting one to me um, is Nathaniel Vacos. Nathaniel Vacos put something up on his social media. It was tweeted around. 
um, choosing kind of between Cincinnati and Wisconsin. So Nathaniel Vatkos is a kicker, okay, out of the University of Ohio. Um, freshman All-American last year. Fresh, uh, freshman All-American Conference. Or freshman All-American last year, sorry. Um, really strong leg. Came in immediately, seized that job. Was 22 of 27 for field goal attempts. 48 of 49 on extra points. 3 out of 5 in 40 to 49 yards. And he was 2 out of 4 from 50 plus. Like, he's got a leg. And if you look at this team, kicker has been, I would say, I wouldn't say it definitely hasn't been a strength in a while, right? I don't want to be too critical, um, but it is definitely not been a strength in a while. We brought in Vito Calvaroso. You remember Vito, right? The the cannon, the howitzer-legged uh, kicker from Arkansas, one of the strongest kickers in the country from a leg standpoint, set a record for touchbacks. And he got hurt like early in camp, and then he just disappeared. He missed two kicks really, really badly early in the season, and that was it. He was never seen from again. Um, this guy is a hopefully a better version of that, right? He's young. He's got three years of eligibility left. Strong leg. Again, as a freshman last year, he went two out of four from 50-plus. How nice would it be to roll a kicker out there in Madison and have a coin flip from 50-plus for a field goal and then be three out of five from up to 49? And then inside of that, he was almost automatic. So getting a kicker, you know, you you remember Rafael Gaglione, right? And some of the huge game-winning kicks he hit. I mean, Nebraska, Iowa, I mean, just huge game-winning kicks or, or game-tying kicks in big moments. Having that clutch kicker that can come in when the crowd is riled up, the lights are on, it's nighttime, and he can just bang out a 47-yarder to seal the game, a 44-yarder to seal the game. That's such a incredible thing to have in your back pocket, right? It, it affects your play calling on third and seven from maybe the 35, you can play for a field goal. You don't have to get the first down. So uh, I think, I think the Vacos one is really interesting to me getting, uh, and we haven't got him obviously, but it's somebody that Wisconsin's been in on. He, he tweeted uh, social media, Wisconsin's new recruiting guys, uh, Max, ah, I forget his last name, Pat Lampert and Max, I forget his last name. It's, it's not coming to me, but they're both following him. So, Definitely somebody Wisconsin's in on. I would classify that as a huge get. Special teams is incredibly important. And Wisconsin special teams for several years hasn't been, it hasn't been a strength of the team, right? Outside of, I would say, you know, the punt, the punting and the punt coverage team, special teams has not been strong. And by the way, that, that punter is gone, right? You know, so by the way, that part of the team is gone. So yeah, special teams needs reinforcements. This would be a really cool get to, to bring in a kicker for the second year in a row. Hopefully this one turns out a little bit better. So that's kind of a, a really quick snapshot of what's coming in, what's been here, what we're linked to. Uh, four receivers, a couple from Cincinnati, one from Oklahoma State, who's really good, Bryson Green, and then CJ Williams, which is the, the whale that's out there. That would be an enormous get. It goes without saying. And then you have the tight end from Notre Dame, Kane Barong. And then the kicker from Ohio, uh, Nathaniel Vacos, with a big leg. He's a freshman last year. So, yeah, there's a lot out there still, right? And I'll, I think I think you can see two or three of these players probably eventually ending up in Madison. And we're going to follow up on that for sure. Um, in terms of needs, right, this checks a lot of needs off. I think receiver was a need to get a body. I think tight end, kicker, punter is still out there. Um, the only thing – I I look at now that they've added two offensive linemen as well. I would love for them to be in on another defensive lineman or edge rusher or outside linebacker somewhere, but we haven't seen any of those names linked. And it's not to say they're not on somebody, but another defensive lineman, especially a run stopper in the middle, a run stopper in the middle would be, I think, beneficial for the defense. But those are hard to find. Like those, those dudes are hard to find. So, all right, coming up, we are going to break down, talk a little bit about Wisconsin, Illinois. Why? I was kind of right about a fatal flaw this team has, and it's something Greg Gard's going to have to figure out going forward. We're going to talk about that next on Lockdown Badgers. But first, today's show is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online remains your number one source for all your sports betting needs and information. It's the place we go to on Locked On, get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. Pro football to college bowl season, basketball to World Cup, um, and everything in between. Every sport you can think about, they have you covered at Bet Online. If you love sports podcasts, you can find those there too. Sports news plus live casino games. And I've talked about my futures betting, uh, live in-game betting. If you're in the middle of a game, you can make bets. You can also, if you have a feel on a team, you can make a futures bet. Who's going to win the Super Bowl? Y'all know I've been on the Niners, which actually doesn't look as crazy as it did a couple weeks ago. I'm also on the Suns, which looks way worse than it did a couple weeks ago. So, uh, But I bet with my heart. I enjoy it. 
Um, do it responsibly as always, but head to bet online um, with the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info, head to the website today, use your mobile device to learn more bet online where the game starts. All right, y'all let's get into the Illinois game. So, we didn't do a reaction show afterwards. I was coaching uh, youth basketball at the time, so I had to record the game, watch it later, and it was it just didn't feel like it was really worth jumping into a, to do a live reaction when I don't think anybody would have been up. But honestly, it wasn't surprising. It, it's not if if we could lose a ton of games in the Big Ten with or without Tyler Wall, by the way. <clears throat> but especially if you take Tyler Wall out of it, we we did an early season show where we talked about. Uh, Badger basketball tiers, right? Who's the most important player? And universally, everyone on the show, I forget who was on that show, but it's Tyler Wall. I mean, Chucky Eppern's right there as well, but who's the best player on the team? It's Tyler Wall. And taking him out defensively from a rebounding standpoint, from an offensive creation standpoint, from a free throw standpoint, um, he puts so much pressure on the other team. Taking him out of the ecosystem, everything kind of collapses, right? It's like kicking out a foundational pillar. Uh, you know, the, the cathedral's not going to stay stay upright without those pillars underneath it. And there's a couple pillars on this team you can't lose. Tyler Wall's one of those pillars. So losing him, of course, the foundation cracked. It fell apart. That's It's okay. Like, that's the other thing I would say. Basketball, a, a January loss on the road, um, it's without one of your better players, without one of your at least two best players, that's okay. Like, it happens. It stinks. It's not the end of the world. It's not a huge deal. This team's going to lose more games in the Big Ten, especially, again, if Tyler Wall's not going to be here. Now, the fatal flaw with this team is something I talked about before the season. It's the same thing that they had last year. They have no depth, and this is what happens. This is why uh, a couple weeks ago when they were ripping off a bunch of close wins, uh, Rajiv and I were talking. Rajiv is more optimistic than I am, which, which I love him for, by the way. He has got, he's got honest, great insight with optimism. That's why he's one of the best. Uh, but I was telling them, I don't think this team gets out of the 32, the round of 32. And it's because of this. It's because there's no depth. And there's frankly no way to replace. Yeah, and listen, when I say depth, I don't mean teams have a guy on their bench that can come in and replace Tyler Wall completely. Or can come in and replace Chucky Hepburn completely. But you have to have somebody who can come in and do a facsimile of some of that. And the Badgers have nothing off their, their bench. There's just nothing there. And you're not going to make it through a Big Ten season with – Chucky Hepburn, Tyler Wall, Stephen Crowell, Connor Seijin, um, Jordan Davis never getting hurt. Max Klesman never getting hurt. Some of those dudes are going to get hurt, and the Badgers have no depth. So it's the same thing that tripped them up last year, right? I think they could have made a run with, with Johnny Davis, but he got dinged up, and then Chucky Hepburn got hurt, and that was it because there's no depth on the team. You, had, you saw Isaac Lindsay trying to step in in a clutch moment in that March tournament game to hit a corner three when he had barely played all year. He's come off an injury. Great guard has to figure this out through recruiting. I mean, the, the team is right now, they're they're just desperately searching for somebody other than Connor Siegen to be able to score off the bench. And there's just nothing there. I mean, guard has to figure it out. Now, the class coming in next year is better, but I don't know if it's enough. Like it, it's expecting a lot for John Blackwell Jr. to be ready right away, for Nolan Winter to be ready right away. I think Gus Gus Yaldon probably will be serviceable to good right away. But you're asking freshmen, they have to get somebody in the portal. They have to get somebody who can step in and provide offense off the bench, who can provide a steady eight to 10 points. Um, they probably need a couple people in the portal. They needed a couple, they needed another body in the portal this year. And that's on great guard and the staff. Like they do a lot well, but we have to be honest on some of the, the flaws too, right? It, the team's not deep enough, period. It, that is what it is. Now, again, that being said, this has still been up to this point a very successful season. You're going to lose games in the Big Ten. It's not the end of the world. We don't think the Tyler Wall injury is significant or serious. So I'm not stressing it that much is my bigger point. But it, it underscores the fatal flaw of this team, right? This team, it's like the Death Star. The Death Star has a fatal flaw that's always going to be there until somebody destroys it. You know, the 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 Death Star fatal flaw of the Badgers is there's just no depth. So an injury is going to collapse the team. And um, it, it, I don't think I'm breaking news with that, but I think it's been glossed over a little bit. It's what sank the team last year and barring perfect health, it's what's going to sink the team this year. That being said, like, it's a fun team. I enjoy it. Um, I think they're building with the 23 class towards something that could be pretty special um, in two years as a, as a, as a team that comes together, you'll still have Connor Seijin, you'll still have Chucky Hepburn. You'll have a lot of pieces with some really exciting recruits coming in. So I'm excited for the future, but in the meantime, great guard, 
this offseason is going to have to address the depth of this team in a way that he didn't last offseason, right? You you went from a team that didn't have the depth, and in that offseason, guard didn't do enough to fix it. Now, Jacoby Neath would be helpful, right? He is hurt. He's missing the year. But Jacoby Neath also hasn't been a really good Division One basketball player in three years of playing Division One basketball. So I, I don't think he's the answer, right? I, I heard someone else say that, well, the Neath injury really set this back. Yeah, it certainly hurt. And I'm not trying to trash Jacoby Neath. But again, he hasn't been a really good player at any point uh, other than maybe his freshman year. So I don't know. I think there's a depth issue on this team. I think great guards going to have to need it, are going to have to figure that out going forward. But in terms of, of the Illinois game, not surprising. If you don't have Tyler Wall, you're going to lose more in the Big Ten, FYI. So anyway, um, that's the show today. Big time commit from Brent Fro is, is the takeaway. Appreciate everybody tuning in, everybody joining the show. Um, we're going to keep it going. A bunch of great interviews coming up this week. We got John Garcia. We got Jason Jordan. Uh, we got a quarterback guru that I think y'all are going to really like that's going to join the show. Uh, I think we have a crossover pro potentially with Michigan State. So a lot coming up on Wisconsin. Let's keep going. When you're done here, go check out Lockdown College Basketball. All the latest college basketball news from one spot, only on the Lockdown Network.